Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. William Snevlin coming to you from With One Accord Ministries. And uh, we're, today we're going to talk about one of the uh, more interesting mysteries in the scriptures. We're going to talk about the identity of the Antichrist, of, of the beast that's described in the writings of, of the Apostle John, Yehuchanan in Hebrew. And we're going to see that there that a lot of the ideas that people have about this beast are actually not correct. But the scriptures are pretty clear if you choose to take them literally. So to begin with, let us go to what our Savior himself says. He says this, and right in the middle of the great high priestly prayer, which is in John chapter 17, he, he's praying to his Father. And he's talking about his disciples. And in verse 12, he says, While I was with them, the disciples, in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those thou hast gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, everybody agrees that that is a reference to Judas. Judas was, of course, the only apostle that fell that fell pretty big time, in fact. So we have this term, which is kind of unique in the Bible. It's never been used before. Son of perdition. And, and we all kind of know what perdition means. It means to be lost, to be forsaken, uh, whatever. Now, where else does this appear? Because we want to always use scripture to define scripture. And what we find is this is only used in one other place in the entire scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. And that is in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. And so if we go there, this is, of course, the passage where Paul talks about um, his, his take on this subject. He says, chapter 2, verse 1, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yahushua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as in the day of Messiah is at hand. Now this is the verse. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, in the context, it's pretty obvious this is talking about the Antichrist, the great beast that is referenced in, in Revelation. So here we see a pretty clear distinction. You know, that the, the, this is the same individual. Judas, I would submit to you, is the beast, the, the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist, but the Antichrist. Now, you might say, well, how can that be? He's just a guy. You know, he died. He hanged himself. It's clearly documented in the Gospels. Well, what if there's more to it than that? And again, we turn to the words of our Savior and see what he has to say. So let's go back to John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, this is right after uh, Yahushua has given his discourse about the bread from heaven and all of that, and everybody's left him. And, you know, he says, are you going to leave me too? In verse 67. And Simon Peter answered him, you know, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And Yahushua answered them, verse 70, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Now, notice that, not has a devil, but is a devil. That's very clear. You know, the, ver the word there is. And we don't need to go to Bill Clinton to figure out what the word is means. He's saying that one of the disciples is a devil. And we don't entirely understand what that means. Because obviously, if you're a devil, you're not a man. And of course, you know, you can say, oh, well, he's being metaphorical. Well, I would submit to you, in the light of these other scriptures that I'm sharing with you, this isn't just about a metaphor. This is about a, a, real, a real phenomenon within the deep things, the depths of the evil one. 
Judas was a devil. He was not a man. He was a devil somehow or other in human form. Now, you see, and again, we're not just using one isolated scripture. We're building scripture upon scripture. So the other thing I would just point out to you is if you go to the book of Acts, this is chapter 1. And, and what has happened is, is this is right after Yahushua has ascended into glory. And they're deliberating. It says in verse 14 of chapter 1, Then they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary the mother of Yahushua, and with his brethren. Uh, so they were all praying about what to do concerning the vacancy left by the fact that Judas committed suicide. So in any event, Peter gives this short speech, and at the end of it, he says, um, "They appointed these two. They appointed two, Joseph and Matthias, and they prayed." Verse twenty-four. And it says, "You know us the hearts of all men. Show whether of these two thou hast chosen." Verse twenty-five, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. Now notice that. It doesn't say, Peter is not saying that Judas went to hell. He's not saying he went to purgatory. He's saying he went to his own place. Now, that is kind of interesting because you think about it, what is the natural place of a devil? It's hell. That's where devils belong. They belong in hell. It says in you know, in the scriptures that the, the hell was basically created uh, because of the uh, devil and his angels. And that means, of course, fallen angels. So his place, if, he, if Judas is a devil, his place would be hell. And that's just as like, like the place of an elect angel, a good angel, would be heaven. So this is further indication that Judas wasn't a man he was, in fact, some sort of devil, fallen angel. We don't really understand all the details. But now there's one more point to this to kind of put the, put the nail in the coffin of this evil entity. And that's in Revelation 17. Revelation 17 is talking about the revelation of following you know, Babylon the Great. And it talks here in verse 8. It says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend from where? Out of the bottomless pit, and go where? Into perdition. There's that word again. And remember, this is the same writer. The same writer that, that penned the words of Yahushua in John 17 is writing in Revelation 17. And it says, he go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now, think about this for a moment. This was written, most Bible students believe, somewhere around the year 90. And at that time, Judas, it says, was, he was in the past. But at that time, he is not. But yet, he yet is in the future. So, when you use the word is, you're talking about someone who is, to a degree, immortal. You know, because it says, he was and is not, and yet is. So, in some mysterious way, Judas, as a devil, devils are immortal. And, and he is going to come back. The first part of the verse says that. And therefore, I would, I would just submit to you, and I'm not saying this is like a salvation issue or something, but I firmly believe that, that the identity of the great beast, of the anti-Messiah, is whoever the, the human face of this individual might be, that behind the mask of this false humanity is going to be the greatest villain in the history of the world, 
the, the devil, if you will, who betrayed Yahushua to the Romans. And that, of course, would be Judas Iscariot. So think about this, pray about this, and realize the profound level of meaning you can get by comparing scripture verses with scripture verses and letting the Bible decide itself instead of letting all these Bible correctors and Bible commentators run riot over the word of Yahuwah. Because you need with all things to be a good barian, to study the scriptures, and to compare scripture with scripture to see if these things are true. And that would be my exhortation to you. And I would just say that you need to be vigilant because there's so many lawless, deceptive practices out there among, you know, fake commercial Christianity today. It's just, it's just appalling. You know, it seems like most churches have fallen in this direction, in the direction of serving, you know, the beast who may very well be on the earth right now. I'm not saying he is. He may be. He may not be. All I know is the trend within these, these false apostate churches that for increasing levels of error, increasing levels of walking away from the Bible, walking toward Babylon. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth, which is, of course, Rome, both uh, geopolitically, but importantly today, religiously. So be aware, be vigilant, and be prayerful. If this message is a blessing to you, I would exhort you to please share it and please, you know, pray for us and also please pray about donating to support the work of our ministry. Thank you very much and shalom.